just to attack him. Which are tricky, but sometimes a great idea. 
You know? So with a counter plan, you're saying, yeah, there is something wrong. Yes, we need to do something, but let's do something totally different than what affirmative is doing, right? Um, yes, I agree. We're not going to stick with the status quo. We're not just going to say do nothing. We're going to do something, but I have a much better thing to do than affirmative says. And then the last thing is topicality, which is where you can say, look, what affirmative says they're doing in their case actually doesn't support the resolution itself, right? So maybe uh, this resolution says, let's get a dog, and affirmative's plan is we're going to get a stuffed animal. Um, and so you say, like, look, that's not really a dog. That's not topical. It doesn't actually fit the topic that we're talking about. So you should not vote for a case that doesn't fit the topic. And that's basically what topicality means. But we'll, stick, we'll start, at least, with disadvantages. So, um, we're, we're sticking with the same example that we did this morning, right? So you, re you remember our case of affirmative, that we're getting a dog, and now you're on the other side. You are negative. You think getting a dog is a terrible idea. So I would like you, to the best of your ability, and let me kind of walk you through these subpoints to create uh, a disadvantage, at least one disadvantage, and then we'll share them as a group. So a tagline is just, what do we call this disadvantage? Oh, that's a terrible pen. Uh, let me get a better one. And it's usually the claim, the opinion, that you're trying to prove true. And it's a good idea if it's catchy. Because there are going to be lots of arguments eventually in this debate, especially as you move further in your debate career. So if we have a catchy name for each argument, then we'll be able to remember what it was and keep organized. It'll make your flow better, right? Because you'll know what that argument is. Okay. The next step is uniqueness. And though that may sound like a term you don't use, it's just what was happening before the plan, right? Tell me the story of the status quo. Before there was ever a plan, thing, and usually in the disadvantage, the uniqueness is something, there was something good, right? We had good things. We were happy in the status quo before you, you foisted this horrible plan onto us. Uh, then we have a link. And the link is the plan changed something. In this case, the plan forced us to get a dog, right? You might then have an internal link, and then that led to something else. And then ultimately you have an impact, which is, in this case, the bad thing that happened as a result of the plan, the ultimate bad thing. Questions about that vocabulary? Yes? Well, just for the impact, how like big would like a negative, because it, it, it seems like it'd be easy go like extreme? Like would it be something like, like how big are uh, impacts? So, so uh, it's, it's, a, it's a tactical and strategic question that you should ask yourself. Uh, this is a little more uh, advanced than where we're going to talk about in here, but there's something called impact calculus where we try to figure out like how significant is an impact. And so some things that we look at, it's a, one of the things that we look at with impact is magnitude, right? How big is it? And so there's kind of a joke that in debate, everything leads to nuclear war, right? I got a dog, and the disadvantage is there was nuclear war, um, which is a huge magnitude, right? Yeah. Nuclear annihilation, terrible. But another thing that we, another factor in impact calculus that we use is probability. Right? So I have this huge magnitude of nuclear war. What is the probability that my dog is going to lead to nuclear war? Very, 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 very small. So now I have, might have a huge magnitude, but I have very low probability. Um, and then the last that we look at often is timeline, like how soon is this going to happen? So very, very big magnitude, but very low probability, and probably way off on the timeline, so not the greatest impact. Uh, for this one. Uh, on the other hand, if we're bombing ISIS, there's probably a higher probability that that leads to nuclear war than me getting a dog leading to nuclear war. Um, so then I might want to go for a big magnitude. When you're talking, you know, war and peace, you're probably going to have big magnitude impacts. Okay. So, your name. Oh, go ahead. So is this um, this 
framework for uh, a counter arguments, you would you only use that for the disadvantage? You could use it for an advantage as well. So an advantage but, of a counter plan. Uh, an advantage of a counter plan, or if you're affirmative. Uh, when I gave you the traditional model of uh, affirmative structure, it yeah. has this exact uh, for the advantages as well. The okay. more advantage-based model kind of incorporates harms and solvency into this substructure, but this is the traditional model of either a disadvantage or an advantage, right? The only difference is, uniquely, there was something wrong before the plan, that led to something good in an advantage, or uniquely there was something bad before the plan, or yeah, something good before the plan that led to something bad in a disadvantage. Okay, yeah. Okay. So why don't you try this out? Why don't you talk to people and come up with your disadvantage? What is the bad thing that's going to happen? Maybe even a disadvantage that outweighs our advantages of mental health and exercise or whatever they were. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Y
plan of the red is yeah, to yeah, affect our life in a negative way. I think we're going to have to push the the
get the dog. Resent the dog. <laughs> I know. I know. Decrease. Resent. 
maybe I lost friends because they all hate my dog too. All right. Decreased <laughs> time. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk to Tina Poop. <laughs> well, that might be good. I might turn that around. Okay. Okay. So then, here's the next thing. Um, is case attacks. And so you might want to, and in fact you do want to, leave yourself some time not just to talk about your negative arguments. Sometimes these are called off-case arguments, right? Affirmative made a case, and we call all the affirmative arguments the on-case arguments. And then one negative comes up with their own arguments, we call those off-case arguments. You might want to attack the case, right? You may want to go after their advantages and disadvantages, and also, when you're affirmative, you're going to want to attack these disadvantages, right? You don't want to let these stand. So, uh, what was our, did anyone remember what our advantage was? One of our advantages was when we were for the dog? Security and um, loneliness. Yeah. Okay, so, so let's just quickly do a full advantage. So we have a tagline of like security, right? So before our harm scenario was we live in a bad, a bad neighborhood, right? Uh, the link is we got a dog. The internal link is the dog makes us feel more secure. Right. The impact is that maybe I feel safe and happy. Okay, that might be one of our advantages. So now, I'm negative. I don't want this advantage to stand. I don't want affirmative to win this argument. So. I have there under case attacks, you can take up stock issue, like an advantage, and there are kind of four levels of things that you can do to this. Each one is better. So the first one is you can just ask a question about it, right? Maybe I could say, are you really going to feel safe with that dog? Which is better than saying nothing about this advantage, but it's not that strong of an argument, right? I'm just questioning it, okay? The next thing I can do is I can try to mitigate it, right? Um, and I can try to lessen it, uh, is another word for mitigate. Uh, so I can say, you're going to get a dog, but it's still a bad neighborhood, so you're not going to feel that safe. You're only going to feel a little bit safer. So now this is not quite as strong, but I haven't destroyed it. But still, better than just questioning it, better than saying nothing, is to kind of lessen the impact. You're only going to feel a little bit happier. Uh, the next thing I can do is I can try to take it out. I can try to show that something in here doesn't happen, right? So maybe uh, I can show that uh, the impact never happens, that the dog you got was a chihuahua that, <laughs> that doesn't make you feel any safer, and you're not going to be happy because they are ugly, yippy little, I'm sorry for the dogs, I like them, they're little puppers. Um, uh, and so it doesn't lead to any safetyness or happiness. And so if there is no impact to the argument, why am I going to do it, right? Um, and then the last thing I can do, and the best thing that you can do to an argument is you can turn it, right? And so if you can show that something in here, either the link actually goes the other way or the impact actually goes the other way, then I can take this advantage and literally turn it into a disadvantage, right? Because I can take your logic and show it actually supports the other side. And I can say, um, so I can try to turn this impact. So actually by getting this dog, uh, maybe you got like a dog that is so awesome that everyone's gonna wanna steal it now that because your dog is so awesome, you're actually less safe. Because now criminals are breaking down your door to steal your dog. Or your dog's right? liability to other people. Yeah, and so, yeah, or, or your dog is so untrained that it starts attacking you so you don't feel as safe. So actually now this is a disadvantage, right? Because the exact opposite of what you said was going to happen is going to happen. I've turned this advantage into a disadvantage. 
as affirmative, you can try to do the same thing to the disadvantages, right? You can try to turn them over into advantages. And that's the best thing to do because you're not just questioning it, you're not just saying it's a little bit less good of an argument for the, for the affirmative, you're not saying it's not true, you're actually saying it's true and it's for me now. So now this argument, this advantage, instead of being plus one for the affirmative, is minus one for the affirmative, plus one for the negative. If you just take it out, it becomes zero, right? Not doing anything for the affirmative, not doing anything for the negative. If you turn it, now negative one for affirmative, plus one for negative, okay? So that's what you're trying to do when you start refuting these, is can you steal their argument? Try to take them out at least, never just be silent about them, and nothing else, ask a question about them, but best is if you can steal it and take it for your own. Okay, so I'm going to have you work a little bit on your own again. I kind of tried to walk through and turn this advantage, or at least try to take it out. Can you, you're now back on the affirmative, right? Can you take one of these and try to respond to it, to refute it, as if you were affirmative? What do you say? What do you go after? Do you go after the uniqueness? Do you go after the link, the impact? And how can you take it? and either take it out or maybe even turn it to work for your side. Okay. Talk about it for a little while, see what you come up with. Okay. I mean, so you could just take all the food and make it fertilizer. Yeah. 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 We've never had it. Yeah, I'm 
you want to show competition and or a net benefit. In other words, the best kind of counter plan is one that is mutually exclusive from the plan, that you cannot do both the plan and the counter plan. So can I get a dog and a cat? Yeah. Yes. So there is no direct competition between those two. They are not mutually exclusive. And so by saying get a cat, you have given me no particular reason why not to get a dog. So guess what the affirmative will say? Do both. Do both. Let's get a dog and a cat. Right? And so the affirmative can then steal your counter plan. But you could still do the cat counter plan because what you might say is that there is a benefit to doing the counter plan alone. That the counter plan and the plan don't get. In other words, give me one second and I'll let you ask your question. In other words, you can say plan, get a dog. Counter plan, get a cat. Now the affirmative says do both. And the negative's response is, there are reasons why it's better to get a cat than to get a cat and a dog. And if the reasons to get a cat alone are better than to get a cat and a dog, then the counter plan can still win. But ideally, you want the best kind of counter plans are ones that are mutually exclusive. In other words, let me talk about a different resolution. If my, if my plan is, uh, let's raise taxes, maybe we're gonna raise taxes, to fund schools. And the counter plan is, let's lower taxes. Can I raise taxes and lower taxes at the same time? Nope. No. So those two are mutually exclusive, right? So those two compete without me ever. There's no way the, plan, the, the affirmative can get up here back and say, let's do both. Let's raise and lower taxes. <laughs> you can't do that, right? So they're mutually exclusive, so they directly compete. But even ones that uh, aren't mutually exclusive might compete on net benefits. There might be something more beneficial to just getting a cat than getting a cat and a dog. Uh, you have your hand up first. I was just trying to think of maybe something better than like get a cat would be like maybe a volunteer at a shelter, and then that would be like there's no food involved. Yeah. Like yeah, maybe. Again, though I could, they're not necessarily mutually exclusive. I can get a dog and volunteer at a shelter. But again, there might be some unique benefits to volunteering at a shelter uh, by itself that I wouldn't get by by getting a dog and volunteering at a shelter. Here's your hand up, and then here, if you're, in the back, and then, and then up here. If your um, if your problem with your uh, your school example there, you said uh, to raise revenue for for uh, for schools, uh -huh. uh, would you then have to prove why lowering taxes? Would, uh, would raise revenue for schools if that was your kind of plan? Perhaps, yeah. yeah but you want, uh, well, maybe, maybe raising revenue, just maybe let's just you know, get rid of schools. The reason I wanted to show that is just that it's, uh, yeah, so the kind of plan should still address the harms, whatever the harms are. Um, but it should also not do, uh, ideally, it doesn't do something that can be done at the same time as a plan. Um, and, cat, and actually, if you look at your schedule, there's an entire advanced session on advanced counter plan theory because it gets really into the weeds. So sure. I'm just giving you the very basics on it. Yes? I was going to say, so a counter plan could be, for instance, a security system. Yes. So would they be able but to then, But then I can get a security system, system and a dog, but maybe there are reasons why getting a security system alone is better than getting a dog and a security system. Absolutely. Right? That's where you start to yeah. It have to be strong, right? Yeah. What? That would have to be really strong because yeah. it sounds kind of hard to think. Yeah. Well, yeah. Sense. Which is why sometimes, which is why counter plans are risky, right? Sometimes it's better to just say, let's do nothing, right? That's always negative. Let's do nothing. There are too many disadvantages. Let's just keep the way the things they are. But sometimes keeping the way the things they are is riskier than uh, than doing something, and then in those cases, you want to think about maybe doing a counter plan. Yes. So if you were to propose, if you were to propose a counter plan of like getting a cat, and then the persuasive tells you, well, we can get both a cat. Well, let's get both a cat and a dog. When does um, the negative have the opportunity to tell them that we can get that cats are better? Like getting a cat alone is better. Okay. So here's what happened, right? Here's the, the first speech of the debate is the Prime Minister's speech. Prime Minister's plan is get a dog. Then the leader of opposition speaks, right? And the leader of opposition says get a cat. Then the member of opposition gets up and says let's get a cat and a dog. 
and then uh, the member of government, excuse me, the member of government gets up and says, let's get a cat and a dog. Then the member of opposition gets up and says, ah ha ha ha, no, getting a cat alone is better than getting a cat and a dog. So we're to the fourth speech before we ever get to why getting a cat alone is the best option, but that would be the natural progression through those plans and counter plans. Yeah? When the affirmative is going against the counter attack, when they instead of saying let's get both, can we just go straight to like no cats are bad? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You you are the so it's the easiest thing that they can do is say let's do both. But if they want strategically to decide, like, screw that, I can just win, that dogs are better than cats, then it's just plan versus counter plan. But cats wouldn't address the security problem. There you go, and that's maybe why the plan is better, right, than the counter plan. Make sure that. So, like I said, you can, uh, we could spend an entire 45 minutes just on the intricacies of counter plans, and in some of the more advanced sessions they did, because it gets really complicated, right? Because going through just four speeches to get to the point where I get to say, you know, cats are better than a cat and a dog, um, gets really complicated. But just know that that is another option that you have as a negative, is that you can say, let's do something else. Um, it's risky, but sometimes worth the risk. Uh, the last thing that's there is topicality, which is if you feel like that the affirmative has said something that doesn't actually support the resolution. If the resolution is let's attack ISIS and they bomb Ukraine, it's their plan, you can say like, look, you're not even supporting the resolution. You are not topical. And one of the things in the shit's up, topical plan, says that your plan must support the topic of the resolution. And so I won't, again, there was a whole advanced session on topicality, uh, but if you can just say like, look, you're not actually supporting the resolution, that's a reason alone not to vote affirmative. Affirmative must, has a burden of proof, has to prove that we should accept the resolution. If their plan doesn't support the resolution, they haven't met that burden of proof. All right, go get lunch. Thank you. You get an hour for lunch, and then you come back and you debate. So when you choose the advantage of the size of the nets, uh, yeah, but certainly, like, if someone, if the other team has said that they have turned your advantage or disadvantage, your next speech you want to tell us, no, that's not true, and here's why you have it actually it. So Because if you never respond to it, then I'm going to assume it's true. Yeah. So you can blame it, and as long as they just put it in your mind. Yeah, that's all So, uh, this is good. After lunch, go back to the auditorium, and that's where they will tell you where the debates are going to be. Okay.
it's so hard and like when your nature is like to to get it as right as yeah. you can to first swim. Yeah. The only way you learn how to swim is by swallowing some water. Very true. Swallow lots of water. Yeah. <laughs> so, you, so you might swallow some water today. Okay. That's all that bad. Thank you. Sure.